So you guys voted in the poll the other day and overwhelmingly wanted to see Yanis' release history first. So let's dive right into Yanis' release date before we take a look at his balance changes over the years that brought him to where he is now. So Yanis' release was awkward to say the least. His stats weren't particularly weak for a mage of the time, but the way his abilities functioned, especially in the 2 and the ultimate, was so strange and felt really weird to use effectively, so he was viewed as a pretty weak god release until these things were fixed later in his timeline. So I'm just going to quickly cover Yannis' passive, portal and threshold abilities first, because these were pretty fine at launch. Nothing special, but also not the reason this god release was so weak. His passive was a 25% bonus to scaling instead of 15% we have now, so actually quite a bit stronger. Portal basically has remained unchanged to this day, other than the cooldown decrease to 12 seconds from 15 seconds. And Threshold had the slow damage and duration of the Threshold lowered as well throughout his time. But overall, these three abilities were pretty fair. But let's get into the two abilities that really fucked Yannis at his release. So let's start with the two. The damage on this was technically higher, but I put that word in several sets of air quotes because if you actually managed to hit both balls on someone, they took 50% additional damage at release, where now that is 15%. But that's where the issue arises. It was hard enough to hit someone with this ability, period, never mind hitting both sections of it. See, the targeter and the path of the balls on this ability at release was just so out of whack that any competent player, and even sometimes some crafty minions, could avoid the ability entirely. I'll throw up some footage of the way his two worked in the background for you to watch, because you can only really get what I mean by seeing this yourself. People could basically stand in the middle bits of the figure 8 targeter and take no damage every time. So while the actual damage of the ability if you hit both balls was super strong, the more likely outcome was that you missed half of the time and hit one ball half of the time. You rarely actually got to hit both at release. It was even hard to position this correctly to take out minions. Nowadays if you see a Yanis miss his two on minions, it's probably a sign that he's new to the god. But back in the day it was just accepted that Yanis will miss minions at least 20% of the time with this ability just because of how whack the target for it was. So the 2 was pretty bad, but if you weren't around for this release you'll want to listen in good here when we talk about his ultimate. It was even worse, yet yeah, that's somehow possible. So here is Yanis' ult launch. Most of you probably noticed that there was no CC immunity, meaning this ability could be interrupted at any time during the cast with a stun, taunt, banish, silence or fear. And I believe it would also take the cooldown still if that happened, though I'm not 100% sure on that. And then from that point you're probably just dead if you're being CC'd out of your ultimate. But the keen eyed among you may have noticed that Yanis also wasn't moving while casting this ult. Yeah, that wasn't just for demonstration purposes in the god reveal video, you were actually rooted in place for the entire cast time of this ability on release. So if you try to ult in the middle of a fight, you basically put a massive target on your forehead asking the enemy assassin to come CC you and burst you down. But not only were you rooted, you were also camera rooted, if that's a term. But yeah, you couldn't readjust your aim after starting the cast, so it was like Raul in that regard. Except Raul had a lower cast time and was instant damage, not a travelling projectile like Yanisul, and he was also CC immune and Raul has half the cooldown of Yanisul. Yeah, as you can probably tell, this ability was one of the most awkward abilities I've ever experienced at launch, potentially even worse than Ravenel, and that's saying something. <laughs> Alright, so that was Yanis' release date, let's move on to some of his balance changes and how he got to where he is today. So this first patch on May 28th 2014 was actually a pre-release patch, with surprisingly some nerfs coming out of PTS for Yanis. Clearly these weren't necessary, people must have vastly overestimated how powerful the ult was here. They increased the cast and recovery time, so there was 1.8 seconds total to cast the ability before he could move and cast other abilities again. 1.8 seconds of being rooted and not CC immune. Sounds fun. Also, apparently the tooltip for the ability listed it as through space and Tim, which I weirdly remember being a thing until that was fixed. They also fixed some other stuff and nerfed the additional scaling on threshold, which is more reasonable. I think 100% scaling on threshold would have been ridiculous. On June 12th, 2014, however, Yanis got his first real post-release patch. Apparently, people who were stealthed and or knock-up immune would also be immune to Yanis' portal, so that was fixed. Imagine Loki just being able to press 1 and run straight over a Yanis portal to kill him. I'm glad this was fixed pretty quickly. They also started fixing the 2 with reducing how wide the ability was and making it slightly easier to hit, but there was more to come in the next patch with regards to the 2. And finally, this was the big patch for his ultimate. Adding in a lot of the new features that makes this ultimate so strong today, such as being CC immune, able to move and also able to aim while channeling the ability. Making an enormous difference to how easy it was to use. They also added in that players in the fountain are immune to damage from this, presumably to prevent people lining up across map snipe so that it kills someone as soon as they spawn in fountain. That would be pretty toxic, but also pretty cool. 
So a June 15th brought a nerf to Portal, though really more of a fix in that people who beads the Portal will no longer take the fall damage. Yet you would still take damage even if you beads the Portal CC before this. And what looks like a nerf because of the red text was actually a buff to the two in this patch. They reduced the overall damage output of the ability, but this patch was where they changed the targeter to be more like the modern day Yanis 2, making it 10 times easier to hit, so overall this was a buff. There's no point having an ability that does 1000 damage, but you miss it 90% of the time. This changed that to more like 700 damage, but you could reliably hit it if you were a skilled Yanis player. So with Yanis being a fairly controversial god, don't know if that's the right word for it, but a lot of people say he's batshit insane and others say he's trash. And the stats back that up with his bad performance in low levels of play, but insane utility and power level in top level ranked and competitive. So Yanis wasn't actually changed too much after these initial changes, fixing his 2 and his ultimate, he was left alone for a long time. There were some small changes here and there, like a base health increase and portal cooldown reduction in patch 1.0, and some other scaling nerfs here and there, but the only other really major changes were not being able to enter portals while crippled, stunned or rooted, which introduced some actual hard counters in the form of gods like Ares or Artio, where before he could just run around doing whatever the fuck he wanted going through portals. This happened in late season 2 for anyone wondering. And the final major change was in the form of giving his ultimate the global ult cooldown treatment, upping it from 90 seconds to 110 seconds with it being a global ultimate in the release patch of season 4. He's had a few other tweaks since then, like adjusting the way his 2 and ult work to make him easier to pick up for new players, but for the most part that's Yanis, from his release in open beta 2014 all the way up to season 6 in 2019. If you guys did enjoy and learn something new about our old friend, then drop me a rating and subscribe so you don't miss future polls to decide the next god I cover in this series. But other than that, I'll catch you guys in another video. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.